It being 10.15, we're now going to move to member statements. Member statements. The member for Oxford. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. This past week has busy, been a busy one in my riding of Oxford. I had the pleasure of attending several events on Victoria Day and throughout the week. First, I partic participated in the Victoria Day Parade in Woodstock Monday morning. I had a great time connecting with my constituents and seeing familiar faces. The parade featured marching bands, horses, floats, and local organizations and businesses, vintage cars, entertainers, and more. Later in the day, I made my way to Thamesford Calathumpian Parade. The antique cars, tractors, stilt walkers, clowns, dancers, jugglers, and other entertainers did a phenomenal job of getting the crowd excited. On Friday, I joined the Minister of Long-Term Care for People, for People Care Tavistock's construction start ceremony for their all-new building. For years, People Care has been working with municipality, county, and the province to build more beds, and I'm delighted to see that our government has approved 100 upgraded and 28 new long-term care spaces in Oxford with this new facility. Sheena Campbell, the Vice President of Communications and Engagement at People Care, said that the ministry has a strong commitment to get these beds built, and I saw that on Friday. People Care is also proposing to offer specialized dementia care services when their new fully air-conditioned building is built. Mr. Speaker, it was, a, it was great to have spent an exciting long weekend with my constituents and to witness our government's efforts to fix long-term care in Oxford. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. In May, a resident of University Rosedale, Latif Bullock, attended the annual general meeting of Barrett Gold. Mr. Bullock attended the AGM because Barrett Gold has just signed an agreement to mine in the province of Baluchistan, his former home, without informing or consulting local residents. Instead of answering questions, the CEO undermined and discredited Mr. Bullock, using his refugee status to distract the shareholders from the company's actions. He told Mr. Bullock to go back to Baluchistan. Mr. Bullock is a law-abiding resident of Canada and has every right to be here. If he did go back to Baluchistan, he would face persecution for his work as a human rights advocate, standing up against oppression and the forced disappearance and killing of people. Canadian companies have a responsibility to not escalate conflict in regions around the globe, and Canadian companies have a responsibility to secure free, prior and informed consent from impacted people and governments before beginning a mining project in Canada and around the world. That is what I am calling on Barrick Gold to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke, Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The month of May has been eventful as I made my way around Etobicoke, Lakeshore. I was honoured to attend and be a judge and hand out awards at Fusion for Arts and Hearts competition hosted by our Catholic District School Board Trustee Teresa Lubinsky. The event was a celebration of artistic expression from students in over 18 schools in the community. I also joined constituents at the Franklin Horner Community Centre for the Ridley's Mother's Day High Tea, where many seniors got all dressed up to enjoy a day together. I was proud to bring greetings to the Rotary Club Toronto Tibet for their new District 77 Club mm. Charter celebration. And with the parliamentary system of agriculture, food and rural affairs, we held a local constitution, uh, consultation on upgrading the Veterinarians Act. Last week, I participated in a town hall on affordable housing at Lamb Community Centre, an issue for many in our community. And I want to thank the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing for removing development fees for non-for-profit housing and affordable housing. This will make a difference. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker, I was at the Dorothy Lay Hospice with my colleague, MPP Cazetto, for their annual charity event hike. I want to thank them for their support, and I want to thank them extremely for their support during my mother's illness uh, over the last couple of months. This week, I'll be, uh, or next week, I'll be debating Claire's Law. And behind it is a story of tragedy, but also of hope. And I'll speak on that de de the more details on that day. I hope all members will be present and lend their support. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thanks very much. Member statements. The member from Mishkigawak, James Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Lakes and river up north are unfrozen, and tourism will reach its peak in northern communities. As the season changes, the north comes to life and is ready to welcome Ontarians to celebrate nature, wildlife, through various activities like camping, fishing, and hiking. I would like to remember the caution for many summer activities and for residents and children. Northern Ontario is known throughout the world with there's lots of lakes and a lot of waterways. For uh, there's uh, fishing, kayaking, and, all, and f so uh, to have a flotation device is important when you go on the water. Ensure your f children wear flotation devices and be uh, make sure that you have a, a safety take. Breathtaking hiking hikes and outdoor activities like camping to ensure your safety always let someone know of your location and itinerary also be in form of forest restriction in our area and take precaution when attending your fires and as well as properly extinguishing it when leaving the ground finally do not forget to leave the places as you found it and enjoy the nature in our region uh, take formal roads and don't damage. Bit of what the North has to offer. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Chatham, Kent, Leamington. Thank you, Speaker. In 1905, Spanish American philosopher George Santayana wrote, "Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it." I was thinking of this quote when I stood at a solemn ceremony yesterday at Legion Memorial Field in Maple Leaf Cemetery, Chatham-Kent. Yesterday, our Royal Canadian Legion Branch 642 celebrated Decoration Day, a tradition dating back well before Remembrance Day was proclaimed as our nationally designated day to celebrate the lives of the brave men and women who gave their lives in military service so we could be free. As I stood alongside veteran soldiers and their families under a cloudless, sunny sky at the graves of men and women from my community who wore our country's uniform, I was humbled to think so many volunteered to defend our nation at its most perilous times. Yesterday, people of all ages came out to pause and reflect on our precious democracy, on a world that remains mired in conflict, and on the sacrifices of those who gave their today so we could have our tomorrow. The grave sites of our fallen were tidied. Some attendees read aloud the names of our fallen, and the small, humble tombstones were decorated, as is tradition, with new Canadian flags. A small gesture of remembrance and gratitude, lest we forget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. A question everyone has asked themselves is, how much should I tip? It's a question that often sparks heated debates. There are differing guidelines and social norms adding to the confusion and anxiety around tipping. But how about no tip? There are two restaurants in Parkdale High Park, Bark Smokehouse and Then and Now, who are challenging the concept of tipping by getting rid of it completely. They have implemented the no tipping strategy to ensure that the dining experience is free from guesswork while providing workers with predictable income. As a diner, what you see is what you pay. No more mental math or awkward calculations at the end of a meal. And for the hardworking staff, they know exactly how much they will earn, giving them the ability to plan their lives. Speaker, I feel this is a trend worth pursuing and will encourage other establishments to have a conversation with their employees on the matter. The no-tipping model creates a more relaxed and enjoyable dining environment for all. It's time to simplify the experience of dining and provide workers with the stability they deserve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Speaker. Um, we're now nearing the end of our spring session, and June is right around the corner. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of my colleagues in the House for their service to the province, as well as take a minute to highlight the great work that our government has accomplished in the past months. Speaker, our government, led by Premier Ford, has made significant strides as we combat the housing crisis, 
improve Ontario's health care, enhance our children's education, make Ontario safer, and strengthen our economy. We're building on our progress to speed up housing starts. From January to April, we saw over 27,000 housing starts, which represents a 16 percent increase over the same period last year. On rental, that's almost 7,000 starts, double where we were at this time last year. We're also breaking from the status quo in our health care system that has stifled innovation and struggled to respond to growing challenges and changing needs. On the education side, we're taking action to boost literacy and math skills and ensure the province's public education system focuses on what matters most, important lifelong skills. We're taking action to crack down on criminals and make Ontario safer, whether that's on auto theft or ensuring that high-risk and repeat violent offenders comply with their bail conditions, or helping address uh, the rise of hate incidents against religious and minority groups. Uh, as we're continuing to spur job growth and build a strong economy for Ontario families, more than 600,000 people are working today than they were before this government. Speaker, I promised my riding that I'd work my back off on their behalf. This spring was no different. Let's continue to get it done. Here, here. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Don Valley East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last Wednesday, I had the opportunity to hear Prince Hussein Aga Khan at the Ismaili Centre in Don Valley East, speaking about his seminal work documenting the fragile beauty of our living seas. His remarks and photography were inspiring and humbling, a stark reminder of the vulnerability of our marine ecosystems. In its wake, I am reminded of the critical need to preserve our environment and fight against climate change. And this weekend, Ontarians made their voices heard in one of the largest volunteer-run referendums in our province's history. The referendum, organized by the Ontario Health Coalition, was on the issue of whether our public surgical and diagnostic services should be handed over to private for-profit interests. Mr. Speaker, hundreds of thousands of votes have been cast. When so many people take the time out of their busy lives to vote on one of this government's most controversial and consequential policies, we should all take note. So on Friday, I travelled the province, lending my support to various voting stations across southwestern Ontario. I visited Brampton, Guelph, St. Catharines, Welland, and Niagara Falls. And in every one of these locations, people had been impacted by emergency room closures and out of control wait times. Our health care system is headed in the wrong direction, guided by a faulty set of priorities. On behalf of the hundreds of thousands of Ontarians who came out to vote to save our health care, Mr. Speaker, I ask of the, the, of the government, please, for all of us, put your priorities back in the public interest. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just a few days ago, the Regional Municipality of Niagara and the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce hosted Niagara Week here at Queen's Park. We were joined in the chamber by long, former longtime MPP and chair of the region, Jim Bradley, as well as a number of local mayors and regional councillors, bringing a unified voice of growing better together. My thanks to all members who took the time to sit down with these, uh, these local leaders from the Niagara region. We know that they were welcomed with open arms by a number of ministers, parliamentary assistants and policy staff, as well as many other members. A highlight of Niagara Week was a key meeting between the chair and the premier last Monday, together with Minister Clark. As, as well, many of you had the opportunity to attend and engage with representatives of Niagara at the Niagara Week dinner reception, featuring local wine and food. As a grassroots MPP, I pledged I would be first and foremost Niagara's voice here at Queen's Park, not Queen's Park's voice to Niagara. And last week, our government opened the door to Niagara as we heard about a number of key issues and priorities for the region, including municipal infrastructure, economic development, housing, the, the agricultural sector, and increased access to, access to transit. Speaker, our government delivered at the end of Niagara Week when the Premier Minister Mulroney, Minister Lumsden and Minister Cho all travelled to Niagara in person to announce the doubling of GO train services between, Niagara St between Union Station and Niagara Falls beginning <laughs> May 20th. Whether it's working for Niagara, one of the other 444 municipalities, or the rest of the province, our government is working with municipal, par municipal partners across this province to get the job done. Thank you very much. Order. Member statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize a set of great achievements by a group of young people in my riding of Perth Wellington. 
Earlier this month, a team of grades 7 and 8 students from St. Mary's Catholic School in Listowel and a grade 10 student, Anna Doig, from St. Michael's Catholic Secondary School in Stratford, all won gold at the 2023 Skills Ontario competition. A student team from St. Mary's competed in the LEGO Mechanical Engineering category. Their project was to design and build a monorail. They worked tirelessly to perfect their skills in preparation for their competition. Anna Doig from St. Michael's competed in the aesthetics category, uh, securing first place. This is the second consecutive year that Anne has won the gold medal in the Skills Ontario competition for this category. Thank you to the educators at both St. Mary's and St. Michael's for encouraging, supporting, and advising these bright young students. Thank you to Skills Ontario for organizing this annual competition and for everything you do to prepare Ontario's youth for the jobs of tomorrow. The Skills Ontario competition serves as an exceptional platform for these students to exhibit their skills across a diverse array of trades. Speaker, as the Premier says, a job in the skilled trades is a job for life. Again, congratulations to the students of St. Mary's and St. Mike's on your resounding victories. This splendid achievement is of not, reflects not only upon yourselves, but also on your schools and indeed our entire community. Thank you, Speaker.